Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, new video where today we're going to talk about aggression, villainy. Um, and uh, we're going to be starting right away with Death Star Stormtrooper, one of the basic vanilla cards that we have in the starter set. And this card is very interesting because it has been a pretty good card throughout uh, uh, the entire preview period and it still today is one of the best things you can play on turn one and this may sound very counterintuitive to people but uh, in the current uh, ecosystem in the current stat ecosystem 3-1 is actually very good and I'll try to explain why so basically the thing is most of the units in the game right now are either 4-3s, 3-3s, 3-2s uh, there's a lot of unit with three uh, three health in the current meta, which makes Death Trooper very good because it can basically kill all of them, and also put a lot of pressure on the enemy base whenever that player happens to not have a, a unit. On the downside, the only one HP really doesn't matter most of the time because there's very few cards in the current meta game that deals a ping damage to a specific card, and you could mostly explain that because there's actually only Two one health card which he uh, which uh, seek um, extensive amount of play which is uh, Greedo and Death Storm Stormtrooper. Any other card uh, is going to have more than one toughness, uh, one more than one HP, and that's going to make it. Uh, and it means that ping usually do not see any play, even though there's a few very good ping card like ISB Agent. Uh, literally ping damage don't really see a lot of play in Star Wars Unlimited. Unless you are playing Vader, obviously. So this Stormtrooper, uh, this Star Stormtrooper is a very nice turn one play because you you're gonna play turn one. It's gonna be able to trade with most things uh, because it only costs one. You can pair it with another one drop, or you can pair it with your leader ability if you're playing Vader. Uh, you can just ping with Vader right away, and you can also uh, later on in the game squeeze it uh, alongside another card uh, very easily because it only costs one. So it's a card that basically sees a lot of play, of course it's nothing mind-blowing, but it is a card which I think has been very solid throughout the story of Star Wars Unlimited, and I think is well deserving of at least a B-tier status. I'm going to rate this card over Arc 170 below uh, Consortium Star Viper. It's a card that just is a very solid uh, card that sees a lot of play, of course I don't expect this card to become uh, a staple in all decks. Uh, uh, in the future, going uh, in the future, they're certainly going to print better one drops, or maybe there's going to be a change in the environment. But in the current ecosystem, three one is actually a pretty good start line. Also, really good with Tarkin, where you can play don't want, turn one on Tarkin, be given experience token to give in a four two. Next, we got Admiral Ozzel. So while I think three one is a very good, is a very decent start line. Uh, in the current ecosystem, I think that 2-3 is not a very good stat line in the current environment because there is a lot of turn 1 play with 3 uh, toughness and also 3 attacks. The two most famous one is obviously uh, Battlefield Marine, which were ranked S tier earlier in the game, and also uh, Sabine Ren, which is uh, often going to be a 3-3 on attack. So there's a lot of 3-3 three, three for 2s in this game, and this has made 2-3s for 2 very bad. 2342 used to be a pretty decent stat line in Star Wars Unlimited, but after the introduction of those 3342 uh, cards, it ha they have become a lot worse. And now uh, those units are very weak, and usually uh, uh, a unit that is a 2342 really needs something very strong uh, to justify this stat line, uh, to, to compensate for this stat line. So the question is does Admiral Ozzel has enough of a, of a strong ability to compensate his relatively weak stats? And in my opinion, uh, most uh, more often than not, it doesn't. Uh, so first of all, his ability, of course, only really uh, is playable if you opponent if you're playing first, if you have the initiative. Um, so that means you because then you need to play a card into play that is that comes to play ready, but then your opponent doesn't get to ready a unit. The second thing as well is because you are exhausting your own ozol in order to play a card ready. Uh, yes, on one hand you're getting your unit ready, but also you're missing out on the damage or that Ozzel could have dealt by attacking. So, pretty much the diff really the value you're getting is the uh, is the um, is the value of the unit you put in play ready minus the the value you would have gotten from Ozzel. So obviously this differential 
may not uh, at the beginning of the game is not very big. There's not a huge different a difference of power between a three drops and also. However, as the game goes longer and longer, the differential starts to become bigger and bigger, and it starts to become really uh, far more interesting to use also ability. So, as I, so what I'm trying to say here is that also ability really gets stronger as the game goes later. The problem is that with this 2-3 stat line, is very uh, unlikely going to make it to the late game. And even if you happen to be able to make it to the late game, you still not need to have the initiative to use this ability. You still need this to be your first action. Very often you have all the priorities and all the things that you want to do uh, before using this ability. And then finally, uh, um, um, you're not always... Um, uh, it needs to be an Imperial unit, so there's a lot of things that needs to come together for this ability to be useful. It has to be played on something relatively large, so the differential of power is actually worth it. Uh, it needs to be... Uh, your your Azon needs to be alive, uh, it needs to be an Imperial unit, and it needs to be really the first action that you want to do, which is not always going to be the case. And also another thing is, like, the, the unit comes ready, but it does not attack right away. Your opponent still has an entire turn to actually react to the unit that you put in play ready. That means that that person actually kills your unit that is ready. Not only did you uh, waste the ready ability, but you also wasted an entire turn with Ozol. Uh, so this card looks very good on paper, but there's a lot of things. Uh, the, but the ability is far more difficult to use than it seems at first. Um, maybe in a very controlled meta where you need do not, when players do not play as many units, it can be a lot, a lot stronger, but I have my doubts, so uh, I've basically never been able to use Ozol um, efficiently, and I've played a lot of Ozol. Uh, my first Vader decks used to be uh, featuring that card, uh, and I think this card has really fallen off a lot, especially with all the 3 3 4 twos that we see nowadays. Uh, with that being said, it has two very good keywords, Imperial Officials, and I'm sure that there's going to be some cool shenanigans that we're going to be able to do with him in the future, but in the current meta, I find it to be very difficult to use and not so great. With all that being said, I don't think he's unplayable, I, not even close actually, I think he's definitely deserving at least of the status of C tier. So I'm going to play it C tier, I'm going to play it over uh, Blaze, Malbus and uh, System Patrolcraft. I think it's just a card that has, has happened to, uh, that has a chance to become much better in the future, but right now it is playable. I think the official uh, trait is really what saves the card, because if you're playing a Palpatine deck, you need to have this critical mass of officials, and also, it's a decent option to play in a Palpatine deck to to combine with Royal Guard, but outside of this, I don't I haven't f I find this card very difficult to use, and for me, it's a C tier. Next, we got First Legion Snowtrooper. So remember what I said about two three four twos. They need something very strong to compensate the fact that they will die to all the three three four twos that are roaming in the meta. And uh, First Legion Snowtrooper unfortunately does not have that. It uh, the ability. Is a while can be powerful, especially in a, a, a Vader deck where you can ping something and then attack with First Legion Snowtrooper. Um, it remains a fairly situational ability that needs a lot of setup to to work, and your opponent can play around it fairly easily. And for all those reasons, uh, First Legion Snowtrooper currently fails to kind of meet expectations. So, uh, also it does have the trooper keyword, but it's not as important as the official keyword. So, he's not unplayable, once again, there's certainly some matchup where the card can be good, uh, and in a Vader deck, he's, no, he's not unplayable, but even in a Vader deck, he's not going to be very strong. So for me, it's a C-tier status as well for the Snowtrooper. Uh, as I said, all those 2 3 4 twos that exist in the ecosystem are basically natural predators of those uh, 2 3 4 two, and that's and that's that's very bad for them. So, um, where do I put him? I'm going to play it... I'm gonna play it over, over recruit here. Oh yeah, low CTF seems to be like a, a decent place for this card. It's not unplayable, but it's not it's not great. Next we got fifth brother. Uh, so fifth brother is a card I used to really really like, uh, but once again, uh, in the current meta it's very poorly positioned. Uh, the four toughness for three, it gets killed by a lot of things. Uh, and it's a, uh, the ping damage that he de that he deals doesn't really kill a whole lot of things, and it's the fact that he has to deal himself that he he needs to deal damage to himself to be able to work uh, is kind of a problem uh, because it means that most of the time he's not going to be able to survive the attacks that he that he that he does. 
uh, is very good against uh, one uh, one health units because you can attack the base and deal one damage to the unit separately and kill it. The problem is that there's very few uh, one HP units in the game. And I think what really kills this card is the fact that it's really bad with Tarkin Town. Basically, if Tarkin Town is in play, the fifth brother is basically just going to be a 2-4 for 3. And that's I think, is what ultimately is a, is a big problem for the card. With that being said, uh, it's a card that, if left alive and if one does not play Tarkin Town, can really slap very hard. It can attack for 5. It's a card, once again, if left alive, can be super oppressive. You can basically play a fallen lightsaber on it, and then it can become an absolute power that can kill you in two turns. Uh, it's a card that has the force keyword, so it, it enables a lot of force synergy. So it's a it's a very interesting card because it's a card that that uh, in a lot of situation, in some situation, can just win you the game, or if it's not dealt with. But if it's dealt with, uh, it doesn't do anything. And the thing is, not that it's not that difficult to deal with a fifth brother most of the time. So I think it's a it's a it's a very powerful card that is unfortunately very poorly positioned in the current meta. Um, with that being said, I think it's strong enough to for it to be deserving at least of a B tier status. Uh, the fact that it's the cheapest way to enable four synergies in villainy is very important because there's a lot of powerful uh, uh, force enabler. It's also an amazing card. It's probably one of the biggest reasons to play Grand Inquisitor. This card is amazing with Grand Inquisitor. Basically, in the context of the Grand Inquisitor deck, uh, is one of the best card in uh, is is the best card you could possibly play. Um, another problem with this card, of course, the Grand Inquisitor is not super competitive, which also harm will harm the rating of this card as well. So, a very strong card, but unfortunately very poorly positioned in the current meta. So. Once again, I'm I'm always rating the cards relative to what is out there, and uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, give this card a better status than a B tier. I'm going to put it a B tier. I'm going to put put it under uh, Emperor War Guard. It's a card that, yeah, it's just very unfortunate, but it's a very powerful card, as I said, in a vacuum. Um, moving on, we got Imperial Interceptor. Imperial Interceptor is the ultimate. Uh, early game anti uh, 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 space units, and I think it's still the case nowadays. It still is uh, a card that is very well positioned, kills a lot of very powerful card, A wing, red three, all basically all the two threes uh, flying unit while putting a unit on the board, three two stat lines put some pressure in space. Um, it's also a card that you can combine with energy conversion lab to kill uh, to get, deal six damage to uh, a flying unit. Like uh, like the the Fed fire spray, so it's a card that just simply uh, does a lot, and it does something that no other card in the in the game can do, which is really single-handedly just stabilize a space arena. Uh, so I think it's a really good card, uh, and once again, it's at the same time the fact it's powerful, and the fact that it is, uh, the fact that it's both powerful and also uh, doesn't have much competition, uh, makes this card in my opinion very strong. So for me. I'm, I'm going to put the, the, the Titan Interceptor in A tier. Uh, I think it's just a solid card. Uh, I'm going to rate it over uh, li Lightsaber, maybe not over uh, Rebel Assault. There's an argument to put it over Yoda, but I'm going to put it over uh, Lightsaber. There's Sometimes the Interceptor can be a little bit awkward to use if your opponent does not have any space units. But I think that um, overall, in Star Wars Unlimited, specialized card have a tendency to do better than in other card games, simply because if you have a card that uh, is specialized but don't, you don't have an immediate use for it, you can just resource it. So a wing, uh, eight here for the uh, the interceptor. This card is simply just one of the best uh, anti-space units you can you could play in the game. So it's a it's a very strong option. Next we got Seventh Sister. So Seventh Sister is. Uh, card that uh, is pretty bad uh, outside of Grand Inquisitor because it has uh, no immediate impact on the game. You play, it's a fight up that has no immediate impact on the game and her ability is not even close to be enough to justify that. Um, she doesn't put a lot of pressure uh, um, once she's there. Uh, she's just simply very underwhelming. In a Grand Inquisitor deck, however, she is a much better card because you can deal 2 damage to her, to untap her, and you can attack with her right away. 
kill a ground unit, three damage is enough to kill a, a fair bit of things. And the fact that she is saboteur means that she can always bypass enemy enemy uh, uh, sentinels to actually kill something. So I think she's uh, she's decent in a Grand Inquisitor deck. I don't think she's mind blowing. I, she's not even close to the same power level as Fifth Brother. Fifth Brother is really an amazing card in in Grand Inquisitor. Seven Sister, she's okay. Um, obviously she's a force unit, so that's also a very helpful for the card. Uh, because it enables all those force synergy. And um, overall, it's a pretty solid card in Grand Inquisitor, but pretty much unplayable everything else. Even in Grand Inquisitor, she's good, but without being mind-blowing. So I'm, I'm going to rate her C tier. Um, where do we put her? I think I'm ready to put her over down Miko. Mm. Yeah, I think she's over down Miko, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think the yeah. Middle mid seat here seems to be seems to be about fine for for her. Uh, moving on we got the Ruthless Raider. Uh Ruthless Raider is a is a really great card. Uh comes into play, immediate impact on the game. Very annoying to deal with with six HP, and if you kill it, it will also trigger his ability once again. Um, it deals both damage to the base and to the units. So yeah, it's a very solid card. It has been the probably the best space unit for, available for for red black. Like people really like to to jump this card. Also, the fact that he has six HP means she uh, Mistress Raider can get ambushed from the energy conversion lab, but also from Piet if you happen to be playing Piet. Um, it's a card that uh, can uh, if you use ECL, it can one shot a a, um, a Fed Fire Spray. Uh, without uh, without dying, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of thing going on with this card. It's simply just a uh, a, a very solid card. Uh, it's not like two damage doesn't kill a whole lot of things. So sometimes you don't really kill much of anything with the raider. Uh, and four six, it puts some pressure on the opponent, but it doesn't put a, a tremendous amount of pressure. So what I like about the raider, I think uh, raider currently is kind of an auto include in all red black decks and just for that reason I think it deserves the status of A tier so get, definitely gonna put it on A tier I think it's a little bit more versatile than uh, Imperial Interceptor I'm gonna place it um, I'm gonna place it in A tier over Yoda, Yoda. it's just a, basically an auto include in almost all red black decks it's just a very solid card it's it's a it's a staple. It's a red it's a it's a red uh, red black staple. Talking about red black staple, we also have Emperor Palpatine. Uh, another thing I wanted to say about Raider is like it's a card that fits in a lot of different strategy. It it's it's a decent control card. It's a decent aggro card, and it's a uh, and it's a decent mid range card. One thing you can criticize about the Raider is like it's a card that tries to do a lot of different things: ding damage to base, uh, deal damage to units, but it it doesn't do any of those things amazingly and sometimes a bit of uh, being a bit all over the place is not great for a card but i think as i said these all the qualities are are good enough to for it to grant him a good rating anyway next we got palpatine so palpatine in a vacuum in my opinion is, is the best a drop in the game uh, it's basically a 6-6 six -six with an overwhelming barrage built in and 6-6 six -six overwhelm is also very important is a force unit and Imperial, so two very relevant keywords, uh, uh, relevant uh, traits. So two very relevant traits, immediate impact on the game, a very strong body. That's everything you could ever hope for for a job. It's a it's a very strong game stabilizer. And to me, it is the number one reason to be playing uh, a red-black control deck. So red-black at the moment is a color that is basically split between two different things, the four synergies and the control uh, strategy. And I think Palpatine is one of the uh, is is the strongest uh, probably the strongest red black card and the strongest reason to be in red black. So obviously not every deck can play it; it's quite expensive. But um, so I don't think it's an auto include in a red black deck because obviously if you're building like a, a boba red deck, which is going to be mostly an aggro deck, you don't want to be playing a card that is that expensive. But it is probably one of the biggest reason. To be playing a red deck, so I'm gonna rate this card very highly. I think this is eight here, and I'm gonna be rating this card. 
Okay, I'm going to be rating this card under Traitorous, but over uh, Obi Wan. It's such a it's such a massive powerhouse. Comes into play, kills a thing. It's an expensive card, so I cannot possibly put it in S tier uh, because in certain matchup it's simply a, li a little bit too slow. But it's such an, a very high impact card. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I definitely put it over uh, in higher A tier. It's just a it's a it's a very very powerful card. <laughs> Um, do I put this over Traitorous? It's an interesting question. Yeah, uh, Traitorous is, is, sees a lot more play, but because it's a single aspect green. Yeah, so what, let's put it over Traitorous. Let's put it at really top of H here, just below Echo Base Defender. Next we got Vader's lightsaber. Uh, so this is the other lightsaber, which is, uh, specifically for a specific character and I think Va Vader got the, the shorter end of the stick on that one because Vader's lightsaber is significantly weaker than Luke's lightsaber. It's not unplayable by any means, uh, comes into play, deal 4 damage to, to a ground unit and plus 3 plus 1. I think what armed this card a lot is the fact that first of all Vader is a more expensive unit than uh, as a leader is more expensive than Luke so it's a bit more difficult to to use. The second problem is uh, the, the the ability of Luke's lightsaber is far more powerful than uh, the, the 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 Vader's ability. The ability to heal your unit and and give it shield is so much better than the ability to deal four damage to a ground unit. And I think the ground unit is really what kills this card ultimately. It's a very big limitation, and it makes the it's often difficult to get value out of this card and you can trust my judgment on this card because I happen to be playing this card a lot and it started as a 3 of in the deck and then it went into a 2 of and then it went to a 1 of and then it just completely disappeared from the deck. It's not. It's definitely a playable card and the fact that it works on both Vader your leader and also Vader the, the unit is kinda nice but more often than not uh, it doesn't do, it's a very specialized card a lot more so than the uh, than the, the the Luke lightsaber, so I'm going to place this in C tier. Uh, but I think I'm going to place it relatively high in C tier because, as I said, it's a uh, it's it remains a powerful card. As a plus two plus plus three plus one for two is also not terrible as a raid. I'm going to place it. I'm going to place it here on uh, on the top of C tier. Um, it's specialized, but it is strong. In the right deck, sometimes <laughs> that's a that's the, the the big takeaway here. Next, we got Fallen Lightsaber. So Fallen Lightsaber, I have very f similar feelings about Fallen Lightsaber than I do about about um, uh, Jesus Lightsaber. They're both uh, high risk, high reward cards that if you play them on the right target and you your opponent does not answer it, it's a powerhouse that will wreck you. Uh, but it's very easy to answer. There's tons of ways to answer that card. As I said, Traitorous, Waylay, Take Down, all the removal spells that would just do a 2 for 1. All, of course, all the upgrade removals, uh, which obviously limits the potential of this card. So, how do we place this card? Well, I'm I'm going to rate it similarly. I think, sorry, I, I think Jada's Lightsaber. Oh, sorry, I messed up the ranking on the uh, on this guy. I don't even know why it was. Um, I think it was relatively low. Anyway, I will fix that later. Uh, Fallen Lightsaber, I probably rank it uh, on the same as Jedi's, uh, a bit lower than Jedi's Lightsaber. Jedi's Lightsaber, I think, performs a bit better. Perform a bit better because there's just simply more Jedi units, and I think Yoda is overall a better card than uh, than um, than Fifth Brother, at least in the current meta. So. I have a tendency to to rate this card. I will, I'm going to put it in B tier, but I'm going to rate it relatively low. Uh, I think yeah, here it sounds about right. Over probably over Piet and uh, between Piet and Yularen, that sounds pretty good. Next, we got Force Lightning. Okay, Force Lightning is. Uh, the newest card uh, on this list that has been spoiled, and it is a very powerful uh, uh, force payoff. 
uh, they're simply uh, it's very flexible and um, if you have a force unit it just deals tons of damage and uh, to a unit for a relatively cheap price the silence effect on the card is very situational so I don't think the card is worth playing outside of a dedicated force deck but if you have this dedicated force deck uh, it's a very powerful card so it's it's very similar to to full throw in a sense that if you are playing a dedicated force deck it's a very powerful card but the problem with force especially in villainy is not really the payoff it's the enablers. The enablers are simply not that great. As you can see, what are our enablers? Our enablers are going to be uh, Fifth Brother, uh, which we rated B tier, medium B tier, Seven Sister, C tier, and uh, we're gonna and then Palpatine. But Palpatine is very expensive, so it doesn't really work. Uh, and then you're gonna have Grand Inquisitor as a leader, which is not a great leader, especially as a leader unit. And then you have Vader. Uh, who is good but very expensive, just like Vader as a unit. So, either the, the enablers are either not amazing or very expensive. And it, uh, ultimately, this is what kills this card. So, very powerful in the right deck, but you really need to play in the right deck. So, this is what limits the power of this card a lot. So, I'm going to rate it to B tier. Uh, where do we put it? Uh, over Vigilance, I think, is fair. Yeah, I'm going to put it over Vigilance. Um... Yeah, as I said, it's very limited by the fact that uh, the force archetype for for red black is simply not as good as you might think because it's it's relatively difficult to enable. Now we got a classic. It's force choke. Uh, force choke, um, even though it has synergy with force, doesn't need force unit to be good. It's a great card, almost regardless of of uh, of the deck you're playing. Uh, if you're playing aggro, being able to kill a very large unit uh, and making him draw a card is not really a big deal. Uh, I said it before and I say it again, card disadvantage and card advantage in Star Wars Limited is not a big factor uh, because of the, the fact that you're drawing two cards per turn. So making your opponent draw a card is not nearly a big, as big of a downside as you might think it is. However, being able to, 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 to deal 5 damage to a unit for only 2 resources, sometimes 1, is an amazing rate. You're not going to find a card in a game that does as much damage to something for such a cheap price. Um, one of the big weaknesses of this card is not the fact that it draws you a card, but rather the fact that it only works against ground units and not space units, uh, which sometimes can be a problem because often... Uh, control decks have difficulty against players who go a lot in space. Uh, and this is the reason why Titan Susceptor is such an amazing card, is because it compensates that weakness for you. But unfortunately, you're not always going to draw it. So, uh, obviously the fact that you make your opponent draw a card is pretty relevant if you're playing against aggro. Uh, especially, so sometimes in late game situation, you have to be careful when you're playing Force Choke. Uh, and when you're both kind of fighting for top deck situation. So those two limitations will prevent me from play, from putting this card in S tier. But it is definitely worthy of an A tier status. And I'm going to put it in A tier basically between Palpatine and Echo Base Defender. I think those two cards, uh, Force Choke is just an incredible removal spell. It's an absolute auto-include in all red-black decks. Uh, it just has two major limitations that prevents me from putting in S tier. And that's the fact that... Making your opponent draw a card in late game situation is definitely a problem, and only can target ground units is also a problem. I would, m I think Power of the Dark Side is a far better card than Force Choke, even though of course I, I like both and I would definitely play both of those of these cards if they if I had the chance to. And that's it for the uh, Red Villainy. Uh, so next time we'll talk about Red Heroism, and um, Red Villainy is a is a color that is very interesting. Uh, I think the force synergy uh, it's, uh, is a big part of, of red black and unfortunately uh, the the force archetype the fifth uh, villainy force archetype has not really uh, per performed so well and this is what has held this color back a lot uh, in the game in, co in the competitive environment. Anyway, thank you for following and see you next time.